uh, 17, 18 big blinds, something like that. And Mormon opens. The only thing I can really do here is shove. Um, even though he is opening a lot of hands, he's still he's aware that I know he's opening a lot of hands, and he's gonna adjust by calling with more hands. And if I just re-raise here, it's gonna look way too strong and suspicious, because I wouldn't really do that with, with my weaker holdings, so... And calling is completely out of the question, like, just looks way too strong, and... Yeah, like, there's just no point to it, so it's a pretty easy shot. It's just unfortunately that he folded. Alright, um... Who was... Oh yeah, so Shibata Av, who's on my uh, my left, he's a really good regular as well. Uh, plays, plays pretty tight in my experience, but doesn't really make too many mistakes or anything. Uh, just not gonna give up many chips, so not thrilled to have him at the table either. The same thing kind of goes for Ronald Grauer. Um, I think he plays slightly more hands than in the average regular, but he plays he plays well and he's been around for a long time and doing well consistently. Uh, and and just like the other guys at the table, he knows how to play a stack. He has now like 20, 23 big blinds or something like that. Like he's very aware of how to play the stack, so he's not gonna be giving too much up either. Uh, then there's Mormon, who I have the purple node on. Oh, but by the way, I should explain that. The light blue node is what I use for really good regulars. Um, people who play really well and have a good game, basically. Now, the purple color I have assigned to, like, I guess, like, between 10 15 people or something. And I only use that for the absolutely best players, like the elite. Uh, and Mormon certainly belongs in that category. He's, like, extremely laggy, but also really aware of his image. Um, and when he has a huge chip, like, chip lead like this, he's just going to be absolutely relentless with his aggression. Um, and just, oh, my ton of pots, yeah. Alright, now I have a hand here, two tens, just min race again. Hopefully, this is a pretty good spot to, to pick up some chips and get a double up. Let's see what happens, especially if one of the shorter stacks reships. Yeah, here, as you can see, a snap call. Um, it's not like I'm that far ahead of the hands moment place, but I do think he shoved like some smaller pairs, like say sevens through nines at least. Um, and he can have like the random worst hand. And besides, uh, I need a double up, so like all those factors considered, it's a very easy call. And I think the seven doubled up. Want to flip against moment? How about that? <laughs> so now I have a really comfortable stack. Like the difference between what I can do with a 20 big blind stack and a 40 big blind stack is pretty huge. Uh, basically you can just open more hands now. I can free bet fold to people. Um, like I just have more moves in my arsenal now. Uh, which is really cool. And ace king here. And Shibdov min raises just like I do under the gun. Now, you would probably make an argument for uh, calling, re-raising, or shoving. Uh, I think calling is by far the worst, like, I'm just not going to I'm going to keep his dominated aces in, but I'm not going to be able to stack him even close to often enough to justify it. Now, I like to just free bet just because I want to give him the chance of jamming like a jack-10 suited, ace-jack kind of hand. It's not going to happen terribly often, but at least it can kind of give him the illusion that that I have a bluffing range in that spot. And as you can see, I snap him off and <laughs> trying to look cool, and he has two aces, so I end up looking pretty dumb. That's obviously a, a standard cooler. There's nothing you can do here. Uh, this is just bad luck. Even, even like, at this stack, I've got a final table, uh, even if it's under the gun versus, versus the big blind, like, we're just way too shallow to ever consider doing anything else. 